All right, so as promised, here's our little video on quadrilaterals in the coordinate plane. Um, since your other problems do not give you a coordinate plane, I'm going to kind of block this out and work without the coordinate plane um, for this video. So the directions on problem A said we need to classify things by their sides. And then it says start by calculating the lengths and the slopes of each side. And just to match that page that we've already done, I'm going to kind of organize my work that way. So we'll start with slopes. And remember, slopes, we're going to be doing the y2 minus y1 formula over x2 minus x1. Um, so we just want to find the slopes of each side. So there are four different sides for quadrilateral lion, and they are li, io, on, and then nl. All right, so I'm just taking these. I want to do consecutive sides, so I'm picking two coordinates that are next to each other so that I'm going to create consecutive sides. So li, I need to find the slope here. And um, you can set up y2 minus y1. I'll do that for this first one. That's going to be 2 minus negative 2 over um, x2 minus x1 minus negative 5. That's going to give me 4 over 6. And we always want to simplify and get um, whatever you're going to get there. So in this case, 2 thirds. All right, we can keep continuing this pattern or this process over and over and we want to find all of the slopes. So if you need to um, pause this video to do that, you can. I'm going to work these out. I'm going to pause and work these out in my head and then give us the answers. Okay, so these are the slope values that I got when I continued that slope formula with each set of ordered pairs. All right, now we need to go back and find the lengths. So the slopes do tell us things, but I'm going to find everything they tell me to find first um, before I do that. So for length, again, we're going to be doing, um, well, just like I said, we said in class today, we're going to be doing the distance formula. Um, and for us, that's going to actually just be Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And again, I'm going to list out my different sides. Um, li, io, on and nl. And now I want to be thinking about distance. I'm trying to think about the distance between the x coordinates. So that's how far apart are negative 5 and positive 1. And that's going to be 6. So I'm going to do 6 squared. Wow, that's terrible. 6 squared plus. Now I want to do the distance between the two y values. Negative 2 and positive 2 are 4 apart. So plus 4 squared equals c squared. And if we work that out, um, let's see, that gives me 36 plus 16, c squared, what is that, 52. And we're going to take the square root, and to be honest with you, you can change that into a decimal, or you can just write these as the square root of 52. It's not going to matter for the moment, because we're the only thing we're comparing, if you remember, is are they equal to one another or not. So again, I'm going to pause this video and you can too, and find, go ahead and let's find the lengths of all of these other sides. Okay, so I, I did kind of show you how I set those up, um, and those are the lengths that I got, square root of 32 and square root of 52. So now we want to just kind of characterize, based on this information, um, what type of quadrilateral it is that we must have. Okay, so I'm noticing I have two sets of parallel sides, two sets um, of perpendicular sides because those are opposite reciprocals. So I've got two sets of parallel and my consecutive sides are perpendicular. And then I also have opposite sides that are going to be congruent to each other, but they're different lengths. So based on all of that information, I can think that I'm going to be having a rectangle here. So that is, in fact, what this one is. Um, this whole idea of just applying these properties, that's what we talked about in class today. All right, so let's look at example B. All right, so this time they're wanting me to classify using the diagonals, and they tell me to calculate the length, slope, and the midpoint of each diagonal. Now, remember, a quadrilateral has four sides, but it only has two diagonals. So the diagonal would be like T and G, or I and R. Okay, so that, that's the only thing I'm going to be finding here. So let's do, um, I'm just going to go in the order that they tell me, honestly. Um, if we do length first, we're going to do TG, and we need to do 
um, IR. So that's this is where we're doing that square root process again. So TG, if I look at those coordinates, um, that's going to give me 5 squared plus 5 squared. And when we work that out, we should get the square root of 50. And then IR, same process, 1 squared plus 7 squared, and that's also going to give me the square root of 50. Okay, the next thing they want me to do is find the slopes um, of the diagonals. So if we find slopes, same thing that we did before, same idea for the slope formula. All right, and if I work that out, that's going to be negative 5. Let's see, over positive 5, which is negative 1. And I'll write this below so that we have room. Let's see, this is a slope of negative 1. And then for IR, let's see, that looks like we're going down 7. And then up 1, so that's just going to give me a slope of negative 7. Okay, I'm doing a lot of this in my head, so you may need to be writing some um, more steps down to be doing y2 minus y1 if we're not getting the same answers. All right, and then the last thing it tells me to do is calculate the midpoint. So if we find midpoint here... Um, Remember, that's where we find the average. So we're going to add the x's together and divide by 2. So for tg, that's going to be like negative 3 plus 2 over 2. And then for the y value, 4 plus negative 1 over 2. So for tg, I'm going to get a midpoint. Let's see, what is that going to be? Negative 1 half and positive 3 over 2. All right, so same process or same idea for r, for ir. So if I add the x's together, that gives me negative 1 over 2. If I add the y's together, 5 plus negative 2 is positive 3 over 2. Okay, so now we want to go back and just kind of think about, now that we have all this information, what does that tell us? Um, so I have noticed that the diagonals are equal length. Okay, so that should make me think um, of a few different possible shapes that this could be. Okay, so I know that's true in a rectangle, and you can look back at your like list if you need to. All right, a rectangle, a square. Um, let's see, that doesn't work for a rhombus or a parallelogram, or generally a kite. Though I guess it could be true. Um, we can put like kite with a question mark because we showed that example today. Um, and then isosceles trapezoids. Okay. Um, the slopes are not going to be perpendicular. So if the slopes, since these two are not perpendicular, um, I know that's going to actually eliminate some of my options. So it can't be a square, because remember, squares make those four isosceles triangles in the middle. And it can't be a kite, because those have to be perpendicular to create a kite shape. Um, and then midpoints, so if I look at the midpoints, these have the same midpoint which we said today means that they bisect each other. And if, in, um, if they bisect each other, that means that we're looking at a parallelogram of some sort. So that means I can only go with something that's a parallelogram. So if I think back to my original options, that means here that I must be having a rectangle. Because we said that isosceles trapezoids, and really no trapezoids, I don't think, are ever going to, well, they're not. N there's never going to be a case in a trapezoid where both um, diagonals bisect each other. That's not possible. So, um, again, we're going to have a rectangle here. So, I know this kind of seems like a lot of work, and it is quite a process to think through, but these problems you're going to see a lot um, on, really on the ACT, but you're going to, these are just going to come up kind of here, there, and throughout in geometry. So it's important that you know how to do this.